Test, test. Hey guys, welcome back. Or bomb here, bringing you another one of our uh, Digimon videos. Now today we're going to be talking about all of set three because they just released this morning. Haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I know most of the cards from the leaks already, but you know there's obviously a bunch of cards that I haven't seen yet. So I'm very excited about talking about them today. So today is going to be kind of like a pseudo live reaction, but mostly a discussion. I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can, so I might not get into every detail, but I'm going to talk about some of the major points, uh, why I think this set is going to be one of the hypest sets. Uh, obviously, like, we're not going to get this. I mean, one of the hypest sets of the three sets in Japan so far, I should probably say. We'll keep it like that. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so you guys know the drill. If you guys like the Digimon content, you guys want to see me bump up the consistency of this and maybe upload it two or three times a week, drop a like on this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite card is in this set uh, as a common question of the day. And we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So we're going to start here. Um, love the Digitomas are pretty important, so we're going to talk about them. Oh, by the way, shout out to DigimonCard.dev. As always, you know what I'm going to do real quick? Actually, I need to remove this because this thing's still up here. There we go. That makes things a lot nicer. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys can read this. I think you guys should be able to read it um, with no concerns. Okay, yeah, we're going to do it like this. All right, so... Pormon, when attacking, destroy one of your opponent's Digimon with a thousand TP or less. So this is like the new idea that Red has. They have a lot of cards that can destroy dudes uh, with a specific amount of DP. So this is really cool because of, now Red has this really interesting <coughs> combination with yellow and black. Yellow has the ability to reduce DP. Uh, Red destroys Digimon with DP the, 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 on DP levels. Um, and black can de-digivolve DP to uh, de-digivolve -digi de Digimon to make them, you know, weaker. I guess you know, lower their lower their evolution line so that they are in theory less DP. So uh, that's really really cool, and I kind of like it just in general as its own little control deck. As you guys remember, a lot of you guys played. Uh, a lot of people were trying out this red control using um, uh, Dukemon, Gallimon, whichever translation you prefer. And that was really cool. This kind of feels like a natural inclusion into that. Uh, Gallimon already had a bunch of cards that were destroyed, like a bunch of option cards were like destroyed Digimon with this amount of DP. So this feels like a natural include. Uh, so I think we're just gonna start by talking about red. We'll just come up to the Digitama every time we talk about a new color. But yeah, we're actually gonna just, we're gonna do this by color. I think that's gonna make things a lot easier. Uh, Agumon, another vanilla to play 4,000 power. So really strong, black Agumon, of course. Uh, we have Zubamon. This kind of goes into the whole uh, Ragnalordmon deck idea, which I'm probably going to be doing a profile of in the channel soon. I just haven't built it yet. I probably should. Uh, Ragnalordmon, the new level 7. One of two level 7s in the set, actually, which is the first for the Japanese sets. Has security attack plus 1 and has reboot, so you're never going to have to worry about being knocked out during your turn through battle. You can just be deleted through other means, but <clears throat> not through battle, luckily, thanks to reboot. No. Unless your opponent rests you, of course. By adding one Dura uh, Durandamon or Brylodramon. Bry Brylodramon. <laughs> I love these names. From your hand to the top of the Digimon's Digivolution sources, get plus three memory. So you Digivolve, and then if you have one of the level sixes, either the black or the red one, you can essentially Digivolve for free. Since so it costs three to Digivolve, which is already great by itself, by the way. A level seven that costs three to Digivolve, that's amazing. And then you can, you know, Digivolve again. Now, for a level 7, it's kind of like meh, security attack plus 1 and reboot. I feel like level 7s have to be a little bit more bombastic, but the whole thing about this deck is that it's a it's a deck that really focuses on building up your dudes and giving it a bunch of effects, a bunch of effects to activate when you're level 7. I don't know if this is the best strategy because, you know, you have blue that can discard Digivolution sources. Of course, you have a lot of decks that have a lot of removal cards. I just dropped my drink. I apologize. Um, so I feel like it's a little bit like all-in kind of strat. Obviously, if you keep your one Digimon in your raising area until you Digivolve all the way into close to Ragnalordmon, then you're like kind of solid, right? But Ragnalordmon does have a very consistent way to give yourself like a security attack plus five, so you can very easily just security attack once. And because you're so strong and can potentially become stronger thanks to effects, uh, evolution sources, you can easily <laughs> clear out your opponent's security in one swipe and then just attack one more time per game. So that's kind of the strategy for this deck. I kind of like it. I think it's really cool. Uh, the Ragnar Lord is just like a crazy Digimon. Like, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on with this dude. 
<laughs> this is one of the down. I'm gonna say this right now. This is some of the sometimes this is one of the downsides I feel about Digimon. Like sometimes the artwork is just kind of like too much, but at the same time, Digimon's artwork is literally unmatched when it comes to card games. These artworks are phenomenal. All right, so Zubamon is like the beginning of that. When played, you can reveal one of these dudes with legend arms which is this little trait that you'll see right here it's really hard to see but that's kind of the whole th consistency with ragnar lord mon it has a lot of dudes with legend arm traits um so it, it adds consistency to the deck which is great and um yeah so you can add a ragnar lord mon and one digimon with legends arms so you can add up to two cards revealing the top five which is a lot of cards to reveal <sighs> So that's really strong. It's only a thousand DP. It's three pay, but like when you're looking at the top five cards of your deck, it's kind of worth. So we have Hawkmon, uh, four thousand DP, which is always nice. I mean, having high DP is super relevant, especially considering that like uh, <laughs> these you have things like you have things like um, what's it called, uh, Shine Greymon, and now you have like this red deck that can you know delete a bunch of things by the depleting DP little by little. So actually, having high DP high DP feels a lot more. Um, important than he used to. Zubagramon, another one of these Legend Arms dudes. If your Digimon is level 7, security attack plus 1. Is this better than Greymon? Greymon gives you security attack plus 1 anyways. It's really, it's, I'm really like iffy. Because Greymon is better because it's general. Plus 1, you don't have to be level 7. But this is a Legend Arm, so you get that added consistency through Zubamon. So I think because the whole point of this Ragnar Lordmon is to consistently set up, you probably still want to play the Zubrigarmon over the Greymon if you're looking for a security attack plus 1 kind of dude. Just because it's searchable, and being searchable is so big in this deck. Like, being consistent is so important. We have these brand new things that every color has, security, Digimon. This is actually really cool, and I feel like people aren't talking about this enough. Like, in theory, right? So this, this sucks, right? <clears throat> in theory, because you're a two cost, five five cost to play two to evolve and only 4,000 power with no effects other than being a security digimon but this actually opens up a whole new archetype which i'm going to be doing a profile of some sometime soon and it's like really trolly and actually really fun and i feel like it's legitimately viable and it's this it's like a security archetype where what you do is you play yellow right you play yellow but the yellow that lets you constantly pile up your security uh, your security area and then you just play a whole bunch of cards with really strong security effects. And now you have these Digimon that have security effects that let them be put on the board immediately, which is amazing because now you can have like these really strong security effects that just get rid of Digimon and can swarm the board pretty much at the same time. Uh, so we're going to be, I don't know how viable that strategy is going to be, but I'm really interested in that strategy because it just feels like, if you can play a game where your opponent's constantly being punished from taking your security, and <clears throat> because you're playing things like Terra Force and all these other effects, uh, like these effects that can delete Digimon or stop your or rest Digimon or stop your Digimon from attacking anymore, your opponent's Digimon from attacking, that means that things like security attack plus one, plus two, those things become a lot less viable against you because they're going to eventually hit something that will stop them from attacking. Uh, and if you constantly refresh your security with the yellow cards that you do that, we have like Magna Angemon, we have um, little dog dude, <laughs> uh, things like that. Well, you can you can really load up your security to be like a danger to attack. So that's really fun to me, at least in theory, right? Um, this is going back to what we were talking about later with Aquilamon. Now, I feel like people aren't talking about these cards enough. There's a lot of Digimon that have really low DP because they have really powerful effects that people play. Uh, so even something like Poromon is really useful. I mean, there's a lot of cards only have a thousand DP. Things like uh, all the purple decks, they play Impmon, you have Gabumon, things like that. And those are popular. So I feel like Poromon has a lot more use. And once again, if you combine this with some sort of I don't I haven't built anything like it yet because so far the only concept I have for this deck is a pure red deck. But if you build this with something like yellow or black, I feel like it's gonna be pretty powerful. So yeah, some ideas. Uh you're on another legend arm dude if you have a level seven digimon security attack plus one so you know they pair as well with the other guy uh Silphimon, one of the many multi uh color one of the multi-color evolution digimon so when digivolve change one of your opponents uh, level four or lower digimon's base dp to 1000 so obviously that pairs well with the poromon and with the aquilamon uh so it's really strong and once again evolves from yellow so you can see how the combo goes there and your turn this card is also trades a yellow digimon so it's it's red and yellow so you can actually play things that can decrease dp 
and evolve it from this. So you can play like some level sixes. Who are some decent yellow sixes that deplete? Like, isn't there like a slash Angemon or something like that that depletes Digimon uh, DP? So I think that's really strong. I think this strategy is really strong. Uh, got Metal Greymon here, has piercing. It's a three to cost to play, eight to play. It's really expensive. When did you evolve return one virus attribute level seven Digimon from your trash to your hand? So this is actually really strong because not only do we have Magna Lornmon, we also have Millenniumon. So those are both virus dudes that you can put right back into your hand. Now Millenniumon is a little bit weirder because Millenniumon evolves from black and purple. So it doesn't really pair well with this, but it does pair well with Ragnar Lordmon to an extent. I don't think you're ever going to need this card. You can just keep the Ragnar. But Ragnar Lordmons are safe into your are safe in your hand. This is really like one of those. Oh, I don't think I'm going to draw it kind of card. So I want to get one back in case it gets destroyed. But if you if you get off one attack with a Ragnar Lordmon, you're most likely going to win. You don't have to get another Ragnar Lordmon back. So I don't feel like this card is very good. At least yet, it'll be good whenever we have more level seven virus Digimon. So it's one of those like binder keepers, but I don't think it's necessary in the deck right now. Uh, Durandamon, what are we talking about? This is one of the cards we were talking about earlier. This one has piercing. Um, and it's a level six with an ability. It's kind of weird, but you know, it pairs well with this dude. Valkyriemon, another one of these like, these go, this goes into the red deck I was talking about earlier. When did you evolve? Destroy one of your points of Digimon with 4,000 TP or less. When attacking, destroy one of your points of Digimon with 4,000 TP or less. Now, this is probably one of the better ones, uh, especially that there's like the blue jamming strategy now. A lot of their jammers have 4,000 DP. Obviously, a lot of like a lot of level threes and some level fours have 4,000 DP too. And I mean, it's a weak Digimon, but if it destroys something every time it attacks, that's really, really strong. I like that a lot. Um, Ooh, my computer is going crazy. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna try to do this real quick so that it doesn't get as loud anymore. And that should fix it in a few seconds. Oh, and the close Steam as well. Steam's over. I was playing Digimon on stream yesterday. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> we were testing out the Jamming Blue deck, which is kind of amazing. I'm gonna do a deck profile in that, in that deck soon. And we were also testing out uh, Mallow Mistamon. That one, no deck profile yet. I'm still working on the list, but the list is looking super hype as time goes by. Uh, can I please close? There we go. All right, cool. Back to the video. I don't wanna make this video too long, but it's already been like 10 minutes and we're only getting through red. Oh, Blitz Greymon is an interesting Digimon. I don't know if I like it very much, but it's another one of these Digivolve from both black and red. And it has piercing, which is always nice. And when Digivolve, one of your Digimons, one of your opponent's Digimon D Digivolve too. So uh, it does actually pair well in this whole strategy this whole like red destruction strategy because uh, you can just if you did evolve them by two you can probably make them weak enough to be destroyed by things like Valkyriemon or Aquilamon or any other Digimon that have those kind of effects so um, that's pretty cool I think that's pretty nice um, there we go my computer's finally calming down so no worries there Sorry if you guys heard the background fan, uh, but and that's it for the red stuff, right? We have obviously the secret rares and the full arts and stuff like that, you know, all that good stuff. We don't have to worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and actually, you know what I want to do? I want to jump to black because we can continue the Ragnar Lordmon conversation. And I really am excited about black in this set. So I want to talk about black anyways. So when attacking, once we turn this Digimon to level seven, get memory plus one. So this pairs well with the whole level seven thing with Ragnar Lordmon we were talking about earlier. Pretty cool. Obviously, I think you would, I mean, it's kind of hard what, to figure out what you would play with Black cause, or with uh, Ragnar Lordmon because there's so much to do. Uh, obviously, there's like the offensive route versus the defensive route. I think with Ragnar Lordmon, because you're kind of all in on the strategy, probably the offensive route is better, but I don't know. I, I'm in the air about it. But let's go ahead and jump to the Black cards here. There's a lot to talk about. A lot of cool stuff to talk about, actually. Uh, Commandramon, vanilla, two play. Nice. Uh, Psychmon, another vanilla. 5,000 power is not bad. But, you know, it's, it's three play and one to evolve, so I don't think you'd play it anyways. You don't really care about the power, unless you're a blocker. Both players turn your opponent cannot gain memory except by the effects of Tamer cards. I feel like these cards, because <laughs> there's multiple of these. I think there's two of them, maybe three of them in this set for different colors. And I feel like these cards are auto-includes into, the, into these archetypes because... <sighs> Thor, little little hammer card. Blue blue's annoying. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Blue can gain too much memory. Uh, it's also really good if Malo Mistamon becomes kind of a problem, and uh, Lilithmon and any other of these Digimon that gain you memory, like a lot of memory, because these cards can gain you a lot of memory. Uh, so having the ability to stop it is really really nice. Uh, Ludamon is the same thing as the red one we were looking at earlier. Look at the top five cards: Add a Legend's Arm and a Ragnar Lordmon. So more consistency to the deck is actually really interesting. You have 
you can play eight versions of this card. You can play eight of these cards, if with the eight of these effects, I should say, in one deck. In the 50 card deck list, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that makes the deck super consistent. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, Sukumon is a level four with only a thousand power. <laughs> So that's weird. Uh, three costs to play, whatever. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Play one Chumon from amongst them without paying its cost. Put the rest in the bottom of your deck. So, this might be good if we ever get like five new Chumons. But until then, I don't think this card is going to be that great. Because who cares about getting Chumon on the board? You have a thousand power. That's such a weird design choice, but whatever. Uh, Tai Ludamon, another one of these... Uh, uh, Ragnalordmon dudes. If this Digimon is level seven, D Digivolve one to one of your opponent's Digimon. Not really sure why you would play that in the strategy. I'm gonna be 100% honest, it just doesn't feel intuitive. Black is another one of those security effect Digimon. Uh, Clockmon, uh, bonus turn this Digimon gets 1000 TP. It's nice if you become a blocker. There's obvious ways to become a blocker in this deck. So obviously when you're a blocker, you wanna be as strong as possible, especially with this boy over here. I'm just gonna skip to it right now because I'm so excited about this card, Craniumon. So I know a lot of people in the Digimon sphere are always like, I wanna play a blocker deck because blockers feel cool, they feel fun. <clears throat> blockers were always too passive of a deck to be successful before, but with the Cranium on, you might have just got your win con. Both players turn, all of your Digimon with blocker cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. No Terra Force, <laughs> none of that shenanigans, no attacking and destroy cards with blocker, no um, Chimera Mon destruction. You just, all your blockers are safe, except from attacks and from other effects too like you can still return these due to your hand with uh blue card effects you can still deplete their dp with things like yellow but that makes the black deck a lot more consistent than it has been before and you're a 12,000 dp blocker with the ability to make yourself stronger during your opponent's turn specifically with um, things like the tamers and the clockmon we were just looking at so craniumon makes your black decks oh, I'm so excited i'm so excited to test out black uh, we have tankmon it's one cost evolution, so that's actually really good for, for black. You want those cheap evolution. Excuse me. Giramon, opponent's turn, this Digimon gets 1,000 DP. Now, it's a little bit too expensive for my taste, <coughs> but it's a good effect. Uh, Raiji Ludamon, this is what we were talking about, another one of those. Well, this is not the level 6 we were talking about, but it's another one of those Ragnar Lordmon dudes. Um, if this Digimon's level 7, Digivolve 1 to my most Digimon, so it continues to de-digivolving. Edamon is weird. Uh, it's a blocker, which is nice, um, but... Black has a lot of blockers. I don't think you really want Edamon as a blocker. Seven cost to play, three to evolve. I'm not too sure. When Digivolve, reveal the top five cards of your decks. So you may play one level six Digimon whose name contains Edamon from amongst them without paying its cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So obviously this is one of those cards where like it's good because we have Metal Edamon here, but it's not good yet because we don't have enough Edamons or enough good Edamons. Now there's a lot of Edamons that we'll see in the future, I'm sure, but you want to play this card just to get Metal Edamon on board. This Digimon cannot be blocked, which is whatever. And this Digimon gets a uh, 2,000 DP. It's weird that it's in your opponent's turn. Because you're only 10,000 DP. You want to be a little bit stronger if you want to be not blocked and be very confident taking security. You know what I mean? I know, it's, it feels cool, but like, not yet. Let's give it a few more sets. Maybe we'll see a few Edamons in the future. Uh, we got Metal Ma Mamamon. When it has Reboot, which is nice. And when Digivolve return one virus attribute level 7 Digimon, card from your trash to your hand. Not bad. I uh, don't really see it being too useful. Uh, one of those Ragnar Lord Mons, but this one can actually be played with a Millennium Mon a little bit more consistently because you are level seven. But I mean, Ra Millennium Mon should be on the board twice because after it gets destroyed, it just comes back anyways. I don't really see a reason to put it back into your hand unless you're playing purple, which can accidentally discard it. So uh, I don't really see the purpose in it. Especially since it's a wind Digivolved effect, right? If we had a win played version of that card, that'd be like an instant add in purple, I think. Because <laughs> it's just a more consistent way to get your Millennium on, on the board. Bright Wildramon has blocker, so if you want to make your Ragnar Lordmon have blocker. I mean, you're probably going to play this card anyways, regardless of whether you're playing the red version or the black version. Because you want to be able to add it to the dude, to, uh, to, to Ragnar Lordmon, so that you have a free evolution cost. Uh, having blocker is just kind of a bonus. Um, but, you know. It's, you're, you're probably not going to go the black route, I would think, but I could be wrong, you know what I mean? We have Kreskarumon. This is going to be a, in theory, really powerful card in the future. It has Reboot, which is nice. 11,000 TP is not bad. Um, and when did you evolve? For each of your opponent's Digimon, reveal one card from the top of your deck. You may play one black or red level 5 or less Digimon from amongst them without paying its cost. The rest on the bottom of your deck. So this only works when Digivolved. It's kind of a weird card, right? I don't, I don't really see this seeing a lot of play because it only gets one. 
Uh, you can only get one. You can reveal a bunch of cards. If you're revealing a bunch of cards, though, you're probably losing the game, right? I guess if you're playing blocker, that may not be true. Because if you're playing blocker and your opponent can't hit past your blockers very easily, they're probably going to have a lot of Digimon on board, but nothing they can... They can never attack your security, so... I don't know. Feels weird. But... I just don't feel like this card's going to be a lot of, get a lot of play, even though I was so excited to see Kreskurumon and Blitz Greymon, because they're some of my favorite iterations of Greymon and uh, Gurumon. I thought they were so cool. But, uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it seeing a lot of play, but it's pretty interesting. It's just that it's it's a high evolution cost for an effect that sure you can play down a level 5 or less Digimon. I, I guess you can play level 5 or less, right? But in my head I'm thinking, well, if I want to get the maximum value out of this, I want to play level 5. And even if I'm looking at like 6, at like 6 level, 6 cards on top of my deck, finding level 5 is going to be kind of difficult because you generally don't play a lot of level 5 in your deck, so you don't make your deck inconsistent. <coughs> And sure, you get to play for free, but is it really worth, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm in the air about it. it. It definitely feels like I need to play the test this deck a little bit more, or play test this card a little bit more, more before I make a final decision. But, you know, it's cool. It does have some really sick alternate artwork, though. And I really like this one, actually. It, it's so simple, but I think it's simplicity is why I like it. I like simple artwork. All right, so there's that. We're going to move on to the order again. Let's talk about blue. Now, we just did a whole stream where my buddy Carlos um, was playing jamming part and blue now we didn't have all the cards available to us on um on tabletop simulator so i didn't get a chance to play this card <coughs> but i really really like this card it's really really good i like the jamming deck a lot the jamming deck is definitely like you need to beat me now or you're gonna lose the game give me one i'm gonna clear my throat guys give me one second got a little bit i got i'm feeling a bit stuffy today Alright, so Demi Vimon, another Vimon, although these uh, these dudes being Vimon don't matter because they're in your raising area. But once per turn of this Digimon has jamming, draw one card. It's just an instant include with Upamon, just a lot more draws in the deck. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think you play this over Upamon because you're going to be attacking with jamming way more often than you're going to be attacking your opponent that have no uh, Digivolution sources. So you probably play four of these and one Upamon. Having five dudes that can draw you one card and attacking is really strong though. So that's blue for you. Let's go ahead and talk about the rest of them. We got a blue Patamon. So Patamon's blue now, I guess. <laughs> Here's the first of the new Vimon. So also, ultimately, these make the All Force, All Force decks a lot more consistent because they rely on your dudes having Vimon in them. So that's good. So if you're an All Force player, you have a lot more consistent and a lot more options, actually, uh, to consider in your All Force deck. But if you're looking to play a jamming deck, which is really, really strong, um, you got Vimon here. 2,000 power jamming. That's super strong. Like... You just get a free price, <laughs> or a free security check, uh, thanks to jamming. And you're only a level three. That's that's so good. <laughs> that's super good. We got Penguinmon, sure, five thousand power, I guess. A new Angemon, that's blue. Discard one, digi discard one Digivolution source from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. If you're, I've never really seen a Digivolution dis like a Digivolution source discarding deck. To be honest with you, I don't feel like there's a lot of benefit in playing that kind of strategy. So every time I look at these effects, I kind of write them off, but maybe one day we'll see something super crazy that will make me interested in them. More of these security Digimon, um, one for every color, of course. An X Vmon, another Vmon, once again. And this one's really cool. When Digivolve, one of your level four or less Digimon become active. So obviously you can make this other Vmon active and do two jamming security checks for free. Really, really strong. Um, so I like this card a lot. It's pretty, pretty, pretty exciting. We got a Magna Angemon here. This thing is so like, I just, I, I just like this card a lot. I don't know why. I think it's a blue sky with it being a blue card. I just really like this artwork. When attacking this going digital resources, again, 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 again. All right, cool. Um, it's actually really full fun as like a, a, a counter to Ragnar Lordmon, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, Pahildramon. This is my boy Iyoku. Shout out to you, homie. His favorite Digimon. Uh, when attacking, once per turn, the Digimon name contains Imperial Dramon. The Digimon becomes active. And Imperial Dramon is the core Digimon of the of the jamming deck. And of course, it has jamming. <laughs> Excellent card. And can evolve from green. So, the, I mean, the jamming deck is like a blue-green deck, but you don't really play green Digimon in it outside of a Dino Beamon. Uh, Based Mon, another two-cost level five Digimon, which is really good, actually. We have more of these two-cost level five Digimon making... Uh, Things like Omnimon, just better. <laughs> More cheap evolution cost. Goldramon is one of our level sixes. Uh, 
once your turn, once per turn, if you play another Digimon, this Digimon becomes active. So if you have memory, then you can play Digimon. You can just make this dude active over and over again, which is kind of nice. If you're looking to make, if you're looking to play a deck that becomes active over and over again, you just play all force, right? So like to me, this card feels relevant, but still cool nonetheless. Leopardmon, really similar to Metal Gurumon in blue. Uh, when Digivolve, you may play one of your level four or less Digimon from one of your Digimon from one of your Digimon Digivolution sources without paying its cost. So. I feel like it does something really similar to Metal Gurumon, but it's not the same because Metal Gurumon's whole strategy, at least whenever I played it, was that you attack, you become rested, you use the effect whenever attacking to play a level four or lower, I think it was, um, the level four lower, which is your level three Digimon uh, from your evolution sources onto the board. So you put the Gurumon that makes you active again so you can attack again. And I mean, that feels good, but I'm not super sure if this card's better. I guess in theory, if you attack, you have to attack with your level seven. So it's a little bit, or with your level five, which is a little bit riskier because you're not the 12,000 power Metal Gurumon that you are. But uh, when Digivolve, you become active again. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. But <clears throat> more importantly, your level four less Digimon have jamming, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, that's super duper good. I'm not really sure though if I like it. I'm going to be 100% honest, because when you play the blue jamming deck, you have enough jammers already. Like, you have Frost. I, mean, I feel like you don't need this added Leopardmon jamming capability for your for the blue deck to be good. This feels like it's good for different reasons. Like, you can make Digimon that don't have jamming jamming, but if you're looking to play a jamming deck, this is probably not the way to do it. This is just, in my eyes, I don't think this is any better than Metal Guru one ultimately is what I'm trying to say. But this card is the sauce. <laughs> uh, 12,000 power, 5 to cost, but if you evolve from Pyodramon or Dino Beamon, it gets reduced by 2. So you have a modest 3, you know, standard for level 6s. It has jamming, and when Digivolved, all of your Digimon with jamming become active. <laughs> if you can somehow swarm the board, you can just... I mean, this card can win games in one turn, right? It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh... As if you can digivolve into it. And of course you have Imperial Dramon that makes this dude active after attacking. So this thing gets attacked twice regardless. Uh, so it's a pretty good card. The jamming deck is really strong. That's all I have to say. And what is this artwork, dude? It's so weird. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of these artworks, but like they're so cool at the same time. <laughs> all right. So that's all the blue stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about yellow. Yellow I'm excited about because I love shit playing Shine Greymon. So I'm excited to see what kind of cards they have to make the decks better. When attacking, once per turn, if your security is three or less, draw one card. I mean, I guess you play this with the other one. Uh, the other one is if you have five or less, five or more, draw one card. So I feel like having three or less is going to be a little bit more co common than you having five or more. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. <clears throat> of, of course, Ubamon draws you card. I just realized it's an Ubamon. <laughs> of course, Ubamon is drawing you card. Because when does it not draw you cards? Salamon. That's what the Digimon was called. Salamon. All right, cool. Armadillamon. Three cost to play, four thousand power. Super cool. Why is it level X? Just, just put, just put three. We know it's three. <laughs> that's that's a weird, that's a weird thing to put in there. Salamon, when attacking, if one of your Digimon gets one of your opponent's Digimon get minus one thousand DP for the turn. So yeah, I guess yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, reducing DP combination with the whole destroying dudes with low DP. Uh, it's not bad. I don't know. I feel like yellow. I mean, I know yellow is going this new strategy about reducing DP. So I'm interested in trying it out. I'm not super sure if I'm gonna like it, but I'm interested in trying it out. Um, you have to be attacking a lot more with yellow, which is not something you do when you play Shine Greymon, but I'm interested. Okay, Lotmon, you know, this card has been teased for a while and we haven't seen it. When played, look at the top card of your security stack. If you add that card to your hand, draw one card. That's really good, isn't it? That's, that's like super good. Like, obviously you're, you're like, by, by removing one of your own security, you're drawing two, essentially, because you're drawing the card in your security as well. That's really good. <laughs> and like, it doesn't seem good on on, on, on uh, paper, but when you're playing Shine Greymon and when you're playing any yellow decks, a lot of your effects proc when you have three or less security, right? So your opponent doesn't take security from you um, until they can take all four security at the same time. So if you can forcibly put yourself at three security to activate all your effects while also essentially drawing two cards, that's super strong, dude. I really, really like that. All right, this this is this is an auto include, right? You just play three of you just play four of these in your in your 
in your yellow decks that rely on that. Because like Salomon, if your security is three or less, plus one security. Angelomon, if your security is three, three or less, plus one security. Or recovery plus one, I guess. Uh, I know there's like a new Clavis Angelmon, which is which I'm really excited about. When attacking, if your security is three or less, one of your opponents Angelmon get minus six thousand DP until the end of this turn. So you essentially delete most, if not all, level fours and lowers, and then some level fives too. When just when attacking, that's really strong. Uh, but only works if your security is three or less. This is the this is like the crux of my strategy. If I want to play, if I want to play um, this whole this whole like depleting. DP strategy, it would 100% be this Clavis Angemon strat, which I think is really, really strong. Now, you only have 10,000 DP, <laughs> so that's kind of weak. But other than that, I really like this idea a lot. Yeah, I, I, that's a cool deck. I'm going to try it out. See, this is all I needed. This is this is what I like about the Digimon card game, right? They don't make anything inherently broken. They make... They add to strategies in a really fair way. And I really like to have a Digimon card game. This is a this is a good game. I like this game a lot. It's been 30 minutes. Let's keep this 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 chug along. Uh got him on. It's very happy. Uh if one of your opponents Digimon get minus 1000 DP. So a bunch of dudes that give you minus 1000 DP. I guess if you're playing Clavis, you want to play these strategies, right? I wonder if you play Clavis with a red deck. I don't know if you do. I feel like you need to be consistent with yellow, but whatever, we'll keep going. At least now this is like a yellow version that you don't have to play 10, 12 tamers in, which is nice. Anklemon, uh, this is just another security Digimon. Uh, Turimon, ooh, one cost to evolve, really, really nice, always appreciated. Uh, Antelamon, two cost to evolve, really appreciated. And another Angelomon, when Digivolved, one of your Digimon, Digimon, one of your opponent's Digimon gets security attack minus two. Okay, that's not bad. When attacking, if your security is three or less, play one level three or less yellow Digimon from your hand without paying its cost. Eh, I mean, it's cool. I don't really think it's super necessary. I can't think of a strategy where I'm like, oh, that's a really good card, you know what I mean? Yellow and blue, your turn, this card is all streets blue Digimon. Opponent's turn, all of your opponent's Digimon without Digivolution sources get security attack minus one. That's good. That's actually really good. That actually makes me think that a a security list, like a, a, a strategy where you're discarding your opponent's uh, Digivolution sources becomes actually viable. Because if you can, I mean, this is really weird. It's also really weird because all, you, all your opponent has to do is evolve one of their Digimon. But if you're like, defensive enough and bulky enough your opponent will eventually just get to a point where they just can't take security and you can slowly chip at them so that's another strategy i want to try out that's cool i like the idea a lot we have true uh when attacking if your security is three or less play one yellow digimon from your trash on top of your security another really good card you can just put any yellow digimon you want so you can put like a really strong yellow digimon and then if they attack it and they know it's on the top and they have to take it from the top down uh, they will be destroyed if they're not stronger. That's really I like that a lot. That adds a lot of pressure There's not a lot of strong yellow Digimon though besides shine Greymon, I guess so I don't know Kentaros Mon when Digivolve up to five of your opponent's Digimon get security attack minus two until the end of the turn That's really interesting. That's essentially saying hey, you're not taking you're not taking security next turn That's real. I like that a lot when destroyed one of your opponent's Digimon gets gets minus one that eleven thousand DP until the end of the turn hmm. If there was a way to self de digivolve, I would love this card. But I don't know if I would want to spend. <laughs> I don't know if I want to digivolve my level five into this card. You know what I mean? Because it's a win digivolve effect, which is kind of bad, actually. I mean, the card is cool, like when you need it, but when how often are you going to need it? If your your strategy is not going to revolve around playing this card, you know what I mean. This is one of those defensive cards. It's not it's not something to build your strategy around. But in order for this thing to be live all the time, you have to have a level five on the board, which is not great. Unless you're playing like a bunch of Magna Angemon and you just constantly be playing them down anyways. I'm not really feeling this card. I'm not gonna lie. Clavis though, I'm excited about Clavis. I'm really excited about that card. And we have the Kentaros Mon as a yellow boy. All right, let's talk about green. Oh, we only have two colors left. All right, that's good. Oh, you know what we haven't done? We haven't talked about the option cards for these colors. Let's actually do that real quick. Let's go Let's go over the colors we've looked at already. We've looked at black. Uh, we'll look at the options and the tamers. So, start your turn if you have Digimon with blocker, you get plus one memory. Um, that's actually not bad. It's a two cost tamer, which is actually really good. Uh, it's a cheap tamer. And you're, so like, my problem with these strategies, and the reason why I'm not a huge fan of them, is in order for these tamers to give you a plus, you have to use their effect three times, right? Uh, because you have to, you know, get plus one memory, plus one memory to make up for the two memory you paid. And then you have to get another plus one memory just to get a, a, a plus out of the card. 
a lot of these a lot of the other colors that have these kind of effects don't have that kind of time but unlike the other colors you're a black deck and in black you should have that time because you should have a lot of blockers down so i'm not sure if i love this card completely but it's a good start and in theory i think it's good so we'll have to try of course i'm not like in love with it but i do like the idea uh, plus, if you have like a bunch of them down, you get a bunch of memory per turn, and that's always nice. Um, we already talked about blue, so we can talk about Davis Chan. If your memory is two or less, become three, so it's nice. Uh, reveal the top three cards of your deck, add a blue and, and one green to Juan from amongst them into your hand. So we play this one in the we play this one in the jamming deck because we played Dino Beamon, which we'll go over in a second because we're about to do green next. Uh, we actually I actually like this card a lot. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Davis is good. Being able to grab two Digimon, if you're lucky. Of course, my opponent was very lucky. Because <laughs> I think their only green card is, is uh, Dino Beamon. But okay, let's move on. There's no red Tamers or yellow Tamers. I'm surprised there's no red or yellow Tamers. That's actually really sad because yellow, yellow wants more Tamers. Shine Greymon wants more Tamers. <laughs> and red, red's actually kind of like boring right now. You know, the Tamers and red are kind of like meh. They're not super interesting. So I'm excited about seeing more red Tamers. But I guess we'll have to wait. So for red, we have a delicate plan. One of your Digimon get, if this Digimon security checks and reveals opponent an option card, this card's security effect does not activate. <clears throat> this is actually kind of like low key good. <laughs> it's only one cost. And it means that, hey, um, this is actually really good if you combine it with Mag Ragnalord Mon, right? Because um, if your Ragnalord Mon has like security attack plus five, that means no matter what they hit, unless they hit something like an Omnimon, and you're not strong enough, you should always be able to get rid of all their security. And if that security deck I was talking about earlier picks up steam, this will become like the best tech against it. So I can't, I kind of like this card. I don't think it has any sp any place yet. It's definitely a medical kind of card, card, but it's really, really good. I feel like it's really good, but like it's kind of like where is the space for the deck, you know what I mean? Plasma Strike is a four cost of play. Destroy one of your points that you want 13 DP or more. I mean, this is good. <laughs> I don't think you play four of these. I think if you're going to play cards, you still play Terra Force. But this is kind of like your fifth and sixth Terra Force, specifically for problem cards like uh, like Omnimon and stuff like that. So that's really nice. And it's only four cards to play too. So it's a good card. I like that card. Okay, let's stop fighting. Digimon cannot be destroyed by battle until the end of this turn. Um... Interesting. Until, wait a minute, Digimon cannot be destroyed by battle until the end of this turn. Is that, that's, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> don't you want until the end of your opponent's turn so your opponent can't destroy your Digimon? That, that feels bad. I don't know, I don't know why you play that card. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know why you would play it. Um, Desperado Blaster, discard two Digivolution sources from the bottom of all of your opponent's Digimon. <laughs> that's crazy. If you have a green Digimon, rest one of your opponent's Digimon without Digivolution sources. All right, well, once again, if you're one of those Digivolution source discarding decks, this is a crazy card for you. Uh, it's actually really interesting. I actually really like it compared with Shakaman over here. This this boy, I actually really like it. Um, man, this is a weird. This is weird. Whenever your level five is your most valuable card instead of your level six, you know what I mean? Because if I were to play this deck, this dude will just stay on the board. I would never attack with him or anything. He would just chill. And if I can get like four of these dudes on the board, security attack minus four. That's kind of crazy. I actually really like that. That's 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 kind of wild. All right, let's talk about the yellow. Um, oops, there we go. One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 DP and security attack minus one until the end of your opponent's turn. next turn. Uh, that's not bad. It's not bad paired with everything else that we're doing with the deck. Uh, sometimes you want to reach a little bit. So if you get the minus 6,000 DP from Clavis and then the minus 1,000 from like the other baby dudes and this is minus 3,000, that's minus 10,000 DP. If you have even more of the baby dudes, it's 11,000. It's not bad at all, actually. Uh, Cracker. You, your opponent may discard one of their security if they do not recover plus one. Wait, what? Your opponent may discard one of their security if they don't recovery plus one. That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, so your opponent has to either choose either I'll discard one of my own security or you can recover one of your security. Uh, obviously, this is a very game state dependent, but early game, this card feels crazy. What? That's so strong. Yo, this is a really good card. <laughs> For four costs, you can just get rid of one of your opponent's security, or you can make yourself have more security. And you can do that at like the beginning of your turn, assuming you have enough memory, right? You do this at the beginning of your turn. 
And then, based off what decision they make, you can choose your plays afterwards. This card feels really good. Once again, yellow is very unique because yellow has so many strategies that are very deck tight. So I don't know if you would actually play this in yellow, but if you could make a strategy, not even make a strategy around this, but if you, if one of your decks could fit this card in, I would probably play it in without sacrificing consistency, of course. That's a really strong card. We did talk about black, so we can talk about black real quick. Uh, one of your Digimon gets reboot. This DP cannot be reduced, and it cannot be returned to the hand or deck until the end of your opponent's turn. So all the things that Craniumon don't stop, this card will stop. So it's a tech card, <laughs> essentially. If you're expecting to play against a lot of blue or yellow, uh, you can just throw this card in. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. I like these tech options that these that Digimon's creating for these decks. Um, all of your opponent, all of your Digimon with blocker or reboot gets security attack plus one at the end of this turn. This card's crazy. This card's absolutely, in excuse me, I got the hiccups now. This card's absolutely insane. What? <laughs> if you have a board just full of dudes with reboot and blocker, or blocker, not even and. Uh, you just get security attack plus one and it's only three cost. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Hello, black is so strong, dude. <laughs> one of your opponent's Digimon, one of your opponent's Digimon, they Digivolve by one. If that Digimon play cost is four or lower, destroy it. Eh, it's not really good. So it's essentially a four cost removal card if you think about it. It only works against like, <sighs> actually it's not even that good, honestly. It only works against level fours consistently. Sometimes against level fives. I don't know, it's weird. Um, all right, let's talk about the remaining colors we have left, which I think is just green and purple. So let's go with green. Let's use green guy. Minimon, uh, if this Digimon is attacked by an opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets... If this if this card is attacking an opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets 1,000 DP until the end of the turn. That's actually not bad. I like that a lot. Because uh, if you're playing green, which I did a whole green deck profile earlier, the whole strategy of green is to wrestle a bunch of your opponent's Digimon. So if you're a little bit stronger attacking into them, it's not bad at all. Uh, I don't know if it's better than the other options we have, but it's definitely a good option. We got Auroramon, or Auroramon, Ar I don't know how to say this card. Somebody let me know how to say this card in the in the, in the chat, but I, I don't want to say Oramon because I'm Orbon. But uh, that's I love the I love the artwork in this card. It's, I've never seen something so cute and creepy at the same time. I actually really like this thing. It's weird. Two costs to play, two, two costs to evolve. This is actually one of those really interesting cases where I feel like you would always play this card. Um, not always, but like, like what I meant to say is you'd always win play it instead of evolve it, because evolving it would only give you a draw, which is actually not bad, but if you play a lot of rookies, this card's worth playing just because it's 5,000 power. That's a ridiculous amount of power, which means it's one of those cards that you can very confidently use to security check your opponent while also being a pretty cheap card to play, you just would never evolve into it. Which can, I guess in theory, hurt your consistency, but because green has so many, like in theory, whenever you play green deck, you have a ridiculous amount of rookies anyways. So you don't have to worry about the consistency drop too much. You just have to, you know, be a little bit more careful. Uh, Kunamon, more vanilla goodness. Then you got Terriermon, another one of those cards that can stop your opponent from getting memory. So that's always good. Those are auto includes in my opinion. Wormon, when destroyed, obviously I'm not too sure yet. We'd have to actually play. I haven't done too much testing in set five. I've only done like one or two testing sessions in level five. I've only played, <laughs> I love Mr. Mon. <laughs> uh, so, and I, but the deck, I guess you can also say play jamming. Like I, I let my opponent play my build of jamming and they were doing really well with it. So it's like I tested jamming. <laughs> <laughs> when revealed, a when destroyed, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one level four or level five Digimon from among them into your hand. That's really good, but you have to be destroyed, and you don't really want to be destroyed. Although, if you're, I mean, it's not a bad card, I guess. You just I don't know if you'd want to be destroyed. And 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 uh... actually, this is really interesting because you can just throw this into uh... you can throw this into other decks that don't care. Like, you can th you, that's actually really interesting. You could technically throw this into purple. Uh, as an on-play dude, and then use it to add consistency to add your level 4s and 5s into your hand, which is actually kind of interesting, <laughs> and I kind of like it. I kind of like the idea. I don't know if I'd do it, but like Malamistamon's effect, which we'll talk about because purple is the last color we're going to talk about anyways, but whenever Digimon gets destroyed, you get memory, right? So you let yourself be destroyed. You get memory and added consistency. That's kind of nice. The problem is you don't get the. This is not one of those consistency cards because purple plays from its discard pile a lot. So, but it's still cool. I like it. I like it in theory. Uh, Gargamon for each of your opponent's rested Digimon. This Digimon gets a thousand DP. It's a pretty big boost. That can be a, and it's only one cost to evolve. So, 
kind of liking this card. Uh, I'm not too sure what you replace, but it's a definitely it's a definite potential include in the deck because uh, one cost would actually doesn't Kabu Terimon do the exact same thing? Hold on, guys, we're gonna come right back into this. Kabu, this one uh, for every one of your opponents for some money. Oh yeah, it does. So when the green starter deck comes out and you play this blocker version of Kabu Terimon, you don't want to play a bunch of Digimon with the same name because Omnimon destroys all the Digimon with the same name. So you probably replace Kabu Terimon with that with that card, right? Just like straight up. <clears throat> I feel like that's what you do. Wait, it's back to green goodness. Um, we got more of the security Digimon. Stingmon is a great card. Another one cost of Digivolve Digimon. Once per turn of the Digimon gets destroyed by if this Digimon destroys your opponent's Digimon by battle, get plus one memory. So more ways to get yourself more memory while also being while also playing into the green strategy that already exists, which is resting a bunch of your opponent's Digimon, destroying them for like green control strategy. So I really, really like this card. This feels like an immediate include. Immediate include. Uh, especially since you can arrest these Digimon that have like your opponent can't gain memory except for Tamers, destroy them, and then start getting memory again because you destroyed the problem card. Uh, oops, I skipped the Digimon. We'll, look, we'll, we'll take a look at this one first. Your turn. For every one of your opponents, rest of Digimon, the Digimon gets 1,000 power. So more of that, but it's level 5. It's not too bad. Two cost to evolve is pretty good. <sighs> Dokugumon. Uh, when played, reveal. Oh, when played, that's lame. We <laughs> reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one level five and one level six Digimon card among them into your hand. Trash remaining cards. So it's really good because you get the trash of cards. It's a win played effect and you're a six cost to play. So you're probably never going to be able to successfully use this card because it's too expensive. But it's really good. It's a really good idea. I mean, like, especially whenever I was talking about purple, like green and purple looking like synergy. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's ever going to be in case. But Jewelmon. Whoa, this is weird. Oh, it's ten. Oh, it's a level five, but it it costs really similar to a level ten. Actually, it's really bad, right? Because like your three costs to play ten thousand. Although you're only a level five, that's not bad. But the level sixes are like two costs to play ten thousand in Titanmon. So I don't know. It's interesting though. It's ten thousand power, so it's not bad, and it pairs well with this whole increase your power kind of thing. So it's not a bad card. Blossomon, download minus three. This is so good. We're gonna skip this card because we gotta talk about this card first. Um, Cress Cressmon. This strategy is gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be a whole new strategy for Green, while also keeping the same rest of your opponent's Digimon strategy. Download minus three to evolve it. Your turn, once per turn, you may rest your opponent's Digimon instead of your own while using download. So obviously, it doesn't work with this card. You're gonna have to rest your own Digimon first to download. But if you get one of these Cressmons down. All of a sudden, the download deck with Argomon, all the Argomons having download except for like level 3 one. And now we also have Blossomon that has download. You can Digivolve for free while resting your opponent's Digimon. That's kind of absurd. Free draws, no memory cost, and resting your opponent's Digimon. That's wild. <laughs> That's absolutely wild. Because you can evolve and then attack the rest of Digimon. Bro, it's actually crazy. It's actually so good. So now I think you kind of have to build green completely different um it's gonna be kind of awkward because you don't want to rest your own digimon so you're kind of reliant on finding crestmon as quickly as possible so you probably don't want your level fours or anything like that to be the ones that have download because you want to be spending those small evolution costs like the one evolution cost so you can do that throughout the game for cheap and draw cards without having to worry about resting your own digimon and then when you reach the level fives and sixes that's whenever you want to start resting your, your own Digi your opponent's digimon using the crestmon um because then you know you're getting a lot more value out of it and it's just that's just such a good strategy that's so strong i'm actually really excited about this E, new green profile coming soon. I really like the green deck. After playing it, because I played it, for, I played green for a long time, and like green was never my favorite color. I was just really interested in making green as good as I possibly could, uh, just for video purposes. But by playing it for that long, that made me really appreciate the really appreciate the deck. So that was really cool. Dino Beamon has piercing and jamming, so obviously you can attack arrested Digimon and check his security, and you have jamming. So obviously great in the. Uh, Imperial Jamon deck. You can play this in the purple in the green deck, but because green has its own strategy with download now and cheap evolution costs, you probably don't play this card in green. But you know, you could, I guess. <clears throat> then we have Mega Gargomon. When did you evolve rest one of your opponent's Digimon? During your opponent's next active phase, his Digimon cannot be made active. Uh it's a wind digivolve version of a, it's a weaker wind digivolve version of Piedmon. No, of not Piedmon, of Puppetmon. Is that good? Probably not. I mean Puppetmon, sure. It costs like 
12 or something to play. It's ridiculous. But you get to stop all of your opponent's Digimon from becoming active. So you get a free turn for the most part. And you get to wrestle on your opponent's Digimon. Um, so it's probably better than playing this card. Because once again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. You have to have a level 5 waiting in order for these cards to be really useful. And you generally don't want to have a level 5 waiting. You want to evolve that dude into level 6 so you can start abusing it immediately. Uh, having one in the wings is never a good idea. And then your turn of your opponents. If your opponent has a rest of Digimon security attack plus one, it's nice, but you don't have to worry about that. I mean, thanks to, thanks to Mimi, Green Mimi, you can very easily swarm in green. You don't have to worry about security attack plus one, unless you're playing this card. Now, this card is a cream de la crep of, uh, of green, especially when you're playing things like the download strategy and wanting to attack your opponent's Digimon. Now, I have to sneeze. So before we get into it, Excuse me. All right, piercing. <laughs> so that's really good. So obviously you attack your opponent's Digimon, you do a security check. When attacking, if the Digimon attacks your opponent's Digimon with 12,000 DP or more, this Digimon gets 7,000 DP and security attack plus two until the end of this turn. Now, that means it's essentially an Omnimon killer. It, it kills these dudes that are way too strong for your deck to handle, which is really good, right? But more importantly, if you guys know, we have a, if you guys don't know, we have a really cool card called uh dimension scissors how do you spell it dimension dim dimension scissors uh one of your digimon get if this digimon destroys an opponent's digimon by battle make this digimon active until the end of this turn right so if you destroy digimon with good old bouncer stingmon and you destroy a level you destroy a level five you can make yourself active again now in in level seven i'm going to say now, in most cases, your opponent's not going to have two level 7s down. So, but in theory, if your opponent did have two level 7s down, which is almost never going to happen, this ability stacks. <laughs> so, you can gain 14,000 DP and get security attack plus 4. Now, that's overkill completely. But, actually, I don't know if it really stacks that way, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, it does stack, because it says until the end of this turn. It does stack. Yeah, I was double-checking. I was making sure I wasn't wrong about that. But yeah, so until the end of this turn. So if you become active again, you get to keep the security attack plus two, even if you're not attacking another level seven, right? Even if you're not attacking another level seven, uh, you get to keep that security attack plus two, so you get to do that two times. So if you want to build a Bancho Stingmon deck, <laughs> it's not really a deck you can play, because this is a tech card, but it's actually a really useful tech card uh, for that reason. It's one of those cards where I feel like it's worth playing three, two or three in this in your deck and just keeping in the wings in case your opponent has Omnimon. You just have to be more careful with how you set up your board because you have to be ready to revenge your opponent, revenge your opponent from playing uh, by uh, from their Omnimon play by having level fives ready to evolve into kind of thing. But security attack plus two is really good. You get to check three security for killing an Omnimon and you get to do that again. So you can essentially check in theory, six security cards if you have Dimension Scissors. So, kind of crazy. Now, Dimension Scissors is expensive, so you're probably not going to be able to play it. But, you know, the, the theory is the fun part, right? Let's go ahead and talk about the green option cards now. We have two. I haven't seen these yet, actually. If one of your opponent's green Digimon would Digivolve this turn, you may suspend one of your opponent's Digivolve to reduce the memory cost of the Digimon by five. That's a lot. And it's a free card. Oh, my heart. Uh, now... If one of your green Digimon would Digivolve this turn, you may suspend one of your Digimon, one of your Digimon to reduce the memory cost. So you're essentially giving your, you have to suspend one of your own Digimon to give it a uh, download. Don't, I don't think I like it, honestly. Once again, you don't want to, you don't want to rest your own Digimon. So I'm not really sure how useful this is. So I don't think I'm going to play it personally, but it's cool that it's a free cost. It's a free cost. So that's really nice. Uh, then we have post Positron, pos positron laser, positron laser. Up to two of your opponent's Digimon can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. It's not bad. Then if you have a blue Digimon in play, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to their hand, trash all those Digimon illusion sources. So it's a, it's a stall card. Uh, hmm, that's actually really interesting. Do you play this over Puppemon? You, it's, a, it's almost really similar to Puppemon, of course, Puppemon's better if your opponent has a big board, but if your opponent does not have a big board, all you have to do is stop two of your opponent's Digimon from attacking. Also, you can stop them from blocking, which is nice, but more importantly, you can stop them from attacking the following turn while you continue to set up your board. And then, um, 
you're not gonna have, I mean, most of the time you're not gonna have a blue card down, right? So the other effect doesn't matter, but up to two for only six cost is not bad. I'm gonna have to, so like now every time I play Puppermon, I have to think about this Positron laser on top of my head because Positron laser also a security card, which is arguably better because if it's in your security pile or your security stack, then it's good, right? Up to two of your opponent's Digimon can't attack for this turn, for the turn, then if you have a blue Digimon to play. All right, so yeah, this is obviously, he doesn't have the blocking effect. Um, It'd be nice though, I don't know why it isn't just use this effect to the end of your opponent's next turn. Yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't just use this effect, uh, whatever. Maybe it's too strong if it would stop blocking as a security card, but whatever. I like this card. It's gonna be, I think I'm gonna keep Puppetmon for now, but is this gonna be in the back of my head every time I play Puppetmon, I'm like, is this better than Positron Laser? Because if not, and if it's not often enough, I might just play Positron Laser instead. Because that's a good card. All right, and that's it. No, oh, I mean, we have to go over purple now. But I guess we can go over Ken. We haven't talked about Ken yet. Sorry, turn if your memory is 2, become 3. It's nice. Uh, when your green or blue Digimon destroys your opponent's Digimon by battle and survives by resting this card, get plus 1 memory. Now, <laughs> this is not good. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. Because like I said earlier, in order for you to have the positive effects of that, you'd have to use it 5 times because you are a 4 cost card. Now, to be fair, this is one of your... If your memory is two or less, become three. But if I'm if I'm more interested in playing Mimi because Mimi can swarm the board and also give you extra attacks because your Digimon can attack from the raising area, even if they were evolved from the raising area that turn, or played from the raising area that turn, you can still attack with them. So or the breeding area is what it's called now for some reason. Uh, so I probably won't play Ken, but you know it's it's cool I guess. And we can talk about the purples before we talk about the level, the secret rares that we have. Uh, yeah, so I got purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors for a long time, so we can talk about purple now. Candlemon, two cost to play, always nice. Uh, Gazimon, both players turn your opponent cannot gain memory, always nice. Um, and, wait a minute. Goblimon, Gazimon, I guess this is Goblimon. Oh, Shamamon? What's going on here? Are these all Gazimon or something? <laughs> Gazimon and. This is not right, right? This is not Sham. Is this Shaman Mon? This might be Shaman Mon, actually. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a vanilla card. We'll find out names later. That's all that matters. Sukimon, another one of these beautiful boys. Uh, Wind Destroy, get plus one memory. That's always nice. Uh, I don't know if it's better than drawing cards. I think you'd rather draw cards when it comes to purple, but it's not bad. That's plus one memory. Another card that can give you vengeance, but I mean, it's just it's just a worse version of uh, the um, Devimon, right? Although it is a four cost of play, which is not bad. Four cost of play level four is actually pretty good. Um, so maybe not. Uh, Devi Dramon, which is, look at this artwork, dude, that's so sick. When destroy, get plus one memory, so more memory gain. Which is actually really interesting since, like, purple's all about memory control now. Um, another one of these security Digimon. Merimon, looking so, so good. That is a beautiful card. For just a flame, dude, like, hello? That is, that is sick. <laughs> uh, Raremon. When played, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Uh, add one option card among them to your hand, trash your remaining cards. It's actually not bad. It's not bad. It's five costs to play, but adding option cards to your hand is not bad at all. And trashing is something we just want to do anyways. Skull Marimon, uh, pretty cool. Arukenimon and Mummymon, both excellent cards. We've been playing around with Malamistamon a lot, so huge fan of these cards. When attacking, so this is actually really interesting, right? Let's talk about, let's talk about the card first so that we can get the whole strategy in. Malamistamon super expensive but 12,000 dp is good uh cost 13 and <laughs> 5 to evolve don't worry about that we're not going to be playing it with any of those things it has piercing which is something i continuously forget about because i never think of my purple cards having piercing uh but both players turn if you or your or other if your other digimon or your opponent's digimon is destroyed get plus one memory for each digimon destroyed it's not once per turn it's it's not anything like that so if you have 10 digimon destroyed that turn you get 10 memory so obviously the stacks with other Malamus Mons, you get two of these boys down, you get plus two memory every time a Digimon gets destroyed. Oh, magnifique. So good. Now obviously we have Chimera Mon, which destroys two Digimon at the same time, your own Digimon and your opponent's Digimon. So if you have a Malamus Mon, your Chimera Mon essentially only costs five. If you have two Malamus Mon down, you can destroy one of your opponent's Digimon for only three, which is crazy if you think about it. Uh, so Malamus Mon, super good card. And then we have Arukenimon and Mummymon. Now Arukenimon says, when attacking, by paying three memory, play one Malamistamon from your hand without paying its cost. Mummymon does the same thing, but um, from the trash, then destroy the Sigimon. So the order is actually really important because you have to attack 
use the effect, destroy it. So you don't actually get the security check, but because you destroy it after the Mallow Mistamon is put on the board, you get the added memory from Mallow Mistamon. So essentially you get to play a Mallow Mistamon for two. It's almost like evolving it for two, but you're, lo you're losing your Mummy Mon at the same time, which essentially means that your Mallow Mistamons are never gonna have security or are never gonna have um, evolution sources, which could be kind of bad against blue, especially if you're playing against Shakamon. But you have piercing, you have all that memory control. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Lady Devimon, uh, when did you evolve? Trigger draw two. It's nice. Um, that's actually really good. Hello. Did you evolving and you get two cards? Then trash two cards in your hand. That's that's fine. That's a really good card. Uh, so that's gonna be good in the Lothmon strategy, which I haven't played yet. Uh, but I'm gonna do that soon because I'm really excited about this card. And then uh, once per turn, when you use an option card, delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon. That's really strong. I like this a lot. Uh, that's a really good card. That's an instant include, I think, if you're playing Lady Devimon, which I guess we'll talk about right now. Or Lilithmon, not Lady Devimon. Uh, when did you vault? If you have 10 or more cards in your trash, return two option cards from your trash to your hand. Now, option purple option cards are all good. We have Trump Sword. We have a Grizzly Wing, I think. Then we have some other ones I don't remember, but you already have those. And then we have a bunch of new ones that are good as well. So that's excellent. So we have a lot of great option cards we can grab. And your turn, once per turn, if you play an option card, get plus two memory. A lot of our option cards are only two memory. <laughs> so we get to play free option cards. Um, so that's really nice, just in general. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then obviously that pairs well with this because when you play an option card, you get to add a level three, you get to destroy level three Digimon. And uh, that's just, just good in general. It's just not bad. I don't know if I'm gonna love the strategy more than Mallow Mistamon uh, because when you play a lot of option cards, you're, you're kind of cutting into your consistency uh, as a uh, evolving wise, right? But it's really cool in general. I was trying to play it with Mallow Mistamon because just the option cards are so good, but unfortunately, <laughs> too clunky, so we couldn't do it. We have good old Boltmon. No, actually, Boltmon is not Titanmon. I always get them confused. But yeah, Boltmon, two cost to play, 12,000 power, 10. Just strong vanilla purple deck if you're looking to play another purple rush deck that's really similar. Mastemon, which comes from the yellow side as well. When did you evolved? Uh, discard one security of both player from the top, then you may play a level four less yellow or purple Digimon from your trash. It's not bad. It's just that like, I don't know if I want to do this. Now it's a good way to close out the game against a lot of cards. Uh, Cause you're discarding, which is a lot better than attacking the security. And it's good versus like, if you play in your own yellow deck or because yeah, you can very easily play this in your own yellow deck. You just evolve a level five. Um, because then you can do the whole thing that we talked about with Lotmon, right? <clears throat> so I, I think this is much better in yellow than it is in purple. But I'm, I'm not sure. I'm still not sure if I would play it, you know what I mean? I would not play it in Shine Greymon, I think. Actually, you know, I take it back. I probably would play it in Shine Greymon because I like this card more than I like Seraphimon. Because it both gets you another Digimon on the board and also, uh discard your own security to activate your own effects. So I do like it more than Seraphimon, because it also gets rid of one of your opponent's security cards too. So I think I would play this in Shine Greymon as like a one or two of. In other versions of Yellow, I'm still hesitant. I'd have to try them out first, but I like this card a lot. Plus like Mesamon is one of another one of my favorite Digimon. Like it's just so cool. Like Yin and Yang, Light and Dark, Lady Devimon, Angelomon. That's just such a sick concept in my opinion, so yeah. And that's purple for you. Let's go over the rest of these cards and we'll go over the secret rares. Uh, if your opponent played an option, if you or your opponent played an option card, by resting this card, you get plus one memory. Once again, this goes back into what I was saying earlier about you have to play two option cards or three option cards to get an effect out of this. But so I don't think I like it, honestly. But you know they're cool in theory, right? And then we have new purple option cards, which are all great, and they're all really low cost, which essentially means they're free for the most part. If your opponent Digimon, if you have Lilithmon on board, if one of your opponent get one of your Digimon get vengeance until the end of the turn, and if your opponent's next turn, which means that they attack you, they will go down with you. If you attack one of their Digimon, they will go down with you. Vengeance is one of the best abilities in the game. Great. Rematch, another great one. This is actually really good in the Malamistamon strategy, uh, as more than the Lilithmon strategy, but it's still a good card nonetheless. I had to take it out of Malamistamon to make it more consistent, but it was so good when I did play it. <laughs> Whenever your Digimon get wind destroyed, play this card without paying its cost. Digimon, so essentially, and Digimon played by this card do not activate their wind plate effects, which is, never really happened in purple anyways. But essentially, when if you were to play your Arukenimon or your Mummymon, you would use rematch, right? 
So you would get the Arukinimon or Mamimon back and still get the Malamistamon on board and still be destroyed so you get to activate the Malamistamon effect. So you can get another Malamistamon using that same Digimon later, which is why I really like this card. Unfortunately, it's a lot, it's too much combo. You would need to have the Arukinimon or Mamimon on the board, the Malamistamon, two Malamistamons in your hand or trash, and then also the rematch, which is too many cards to ask for, so I had to cut it. But it is such a cool card in theory, in theory, right? Plus, not to mention, like purple already lets themselves be destroyed a lot. Think like think cards like Itmon and Gabumon, all those cards you want them to be destroyed. So being able to get them right back is really nice. And um, until the end of this, okay, it doesn't work on blockers, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Then Necrophobia, play one level five purple Digimon from your trash without paying its cost. Digimon played by this effect do not activate their wind played effect. So you can get the Mummymon or Arukenimon right back. I haven't really tested this in um, Milo Mistamon, but it is a five cost, which is why I don't think I'm gonna like it very much. This is the main reason why I was trying to pair this Milo Mistamon deck with Lilithmon, because like the, the the option cards pair really well with Milo Mistamon, and Lilithmon makes playing the option cards worth it. But that's too much to add to one deck, in my opinion. We just couldn't make it work super well. So we're gonna hold off on that strategy, and we're gonna talk about the new Seeker Rares of this set. Uh, we have another Imperial Drawn, Dragon Mode. Um, it's a green, so that's pretty cool. If this is a Mobile from Pile Drawn, Dying Beamon, it, it's reduced by two, so same thing. So this one doesn't have Jamming. This one has Piercing, which is good. And once per turn, once uh, when you, when only your opponent's Digimon is destroyed by battle with this Digimon, this Digimon becomes active. So it can destroy two of your opponent's Digimon while also doing security checks. Uh, do you play this in blue? I mean, I don't see why not. Because now you're, you don't have to worry about being blocked as much. The other one's better because you can just attack security directly. So I guess this is like one of these anti-blocker decks. I don't really think you play it honestly, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. It's a nice secret. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's good, but like, is it worth the deck slot? That, that's always like the question, right? Is it, It's good, but is it worth the deck slot? Then we have the big boy himself with the amazing artwork and one of my favorite forms of Omegamon, Omegamon Alter S. A black and a red. So now red has two Omnimons, or Megamons, or whatever you want to call it. 15,000 DP. Um, six to call, evolve once again. When Digivolved, all of your opponent's Digimon get the Digivolve minus one, and destroy all of your opponent's Digimon with 5,000 DP or less. Absurd, ridiculous. Pairs really well in that red strategy I was talking about earlier. So this is kind of the Omnimon you play, right? You did Digivolve. Uh, you probably still have those, like, when attacking effects destroy, and you destroy it. it it's... It's, it's, it's another one of those, you know how we played Volcanic Jermont to get rid of Rookie Rush? This is going to be like really similar, but it's a level 7 instead of like a level 6, and you have to evolve into it. But it's so good. <laughs> when this, all of your opponents Digimon 5,000 DP or less, you don't have to de-digivolve them in order to do that either. So that's really good. When attacking, this Digimon cannot be blocked uh, this turn by returning a level 6 Digimon from your Digimon Digivolution card. Digivolution cards to your hand. Obviously, the other Omnimon is better because you get to attack twice with that one. But this one you can't be blocked, and also you just destroy a bunch of dudes with, with uh, 5,000 DP or less. You're probably going to be destroying the blockers, which is really funny actually. Unless they hard play the blockers, you're going to de digivolve the blockers. So they're not going to have a blocker on the board, and then you're going to destroy the Digimon anyways. Because <laughs> you did digivolve all of your post Digimon. And then. Uh, you attack and you're not going to be blocked. I mean, you, that probably that's probably never going to come up, but its first effect is so strong that it's just worth playing generally anyways. Not to mention you're an, you're an Omnimon, so you're really strong anyways. So uh, this has been an hour-long video. <laughs> I apologize for it being so long. Usually when these, uh, when these videos are this long, they barely get any views. So uh, if you guys actually went all the way, you watched the whole way, let me know your two favorite Digimon cards in the comments down below. Uh, remember, this Digimon thing is new. So if you guys like the Digimon card game and you guys want the Digimon card game to succeed, I'm doing everything in my power to make it succeed. I'm trying to share this game like crazy, uh, make content over it, play the game with a bunch of friends, introduce it to new friends. Uh, you guys as viewers can put in your part too. Uh, promote your Digimon content creators you like. It doesn't have to be me, but just in general, if you like Digimon content creators, like the videos, share the videos, subscribe to the channels, uh, share like sharing the videos are super big. Uh, do what you can, because the more traction videos get, the more people will see the game, the more people will be interested in the game. Nothing but pluses, honestly. So um, if you guys like the video, like the video. Uh, always greatly appreciate it. If you don't like the video, dislike the video. 
Um, subscribe, show all that good jazz, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.